This video is going to be about simplifying radical expressions that contain variables. So let's say I'm given the expression the cube root of x to the seventh, and I'm told to simplify it. There's a simple rule we can use to do this. The rule says, take the index, that's the little number here that tells me that it's a cube root, and divide it into the exponent that I find under the radical sign, the seven. So three goes into seven two times. That's going to give me an exponent that I'm going to use outside of the radical sign. But when 3 was divided into 7, there was one remainder. The 1 is going to be an exponent that I put under the radical sign. Except, as you know, I don't really need to write the 1 because x is the same as x to the first. So, the simplified version of the cube root of x to the seventh is x squared times the cube root of x. Let's look at some more examples. Okay, so here we have the square root of x to the fifth, y to the sixth. You know that when we have a square root, there's a kind of invisible exponent. That's a 2. So we're going to take this, I'm sorry, index, that's a 2. We're going to take this 2, divide it into the first exponent we see. We're going to deal with x to the fifth and y to the sixth separately. So we divide 2 into 5, and it goes twice. So I'm going to have x squared, and I'm going to need a radical sign. I'm going to leave some room in here because I want to deal with the y. And since there was a 1 remainder when I divided 2 into 5, I'm going to put an x under the radical sign. When I do y to the 6th, there won't be any remainder. 2 goes into 6 evenly. It goes in 3 times. So this is going to give me y to the 3rd. Here's a fifth root. We have the fifth root of a to the seventh, b to the tenth, c to the twelfth. Once again, we're going to deal with each of the variables separately. So five goes into the seven one time, so I'm going to have an a outside of my radical sign. Under the radical sign, I'm going to take the two remainder that I had when I divided five into seven, so that's going to give me a squared. Looking at the b to the tenth, dividing ten by five, it goes evenly two times. So b to the tenth is just going to turn into b squared. Going on to the c to the twelfth, five divided into twelve goes two times. That gives me a c squared. And I have a two remainder. So I'll have a c squared over here as well. So this then is my simplified version, a b squared c squared times the fifth root of a squared c squared. Let's do one more. Okay, so we've been dealing with um, just a single radical, but you know we can have a radical in a fraction over another radical. So let's take a look at this. The first thing I'm going to do, rather than dealing with each one of these separately, is take a look at them and think, oh, I could divide 24 by 2. Since neither of these is a perfect square, there's really no reason to leave them in the form they're in. We might as well turn the 24 into a 12. I could maybe do something with the y to the 6th. I could take some of these out. But it might be easier just to get rid of my whole denominator before I do anything. So let's put all of this under one radical sign. So I'll have 24 x to the fifth, y to the sixth, z to the third, over 2 x to the third, y squared, z to the third. And then I'm just going to simplify this fraction. So let's see what I have. I still need my square root sign. 24 divided by 2 is going to give me a 12. x to the fifth divided by x to the third. So remember, remembering our rules for exponents, we're going to take this 3, 
and subtract it from the 5, and we'll just get an x squared over here. Going on to the y's, we have y to the 6th over y squared. Once again, we'll subtract this 2 from this 6. That'll give me y to the 4th. Subtracting, we have z to the 3rd over z to the 3rd. Well, subtracting the 3 from the 3 gives me 0, z to the 0. And any number to the 0 is 1, which I don't have to write at all since there's no sense in multiplying this by 1. It'll just remain the same. Okay, so now all I have to do is take the square root of this expression, 12x squared y to the fourth. I'm going to take the 12 and break it down into 4 times 3. So I'll have 4 times 3 x squared y to the fourth. And now I think I'm ready to finish the problem. So the square root of 4 is 2. I'm going to be left with a 3 under the radical sign. The square root of x squared, remember I have a 2 here as my index, so 2 goes into 2 one time, no remainder, so I just have an x. For the y to the fourth, 2 goes into 4 two times, so I'll have y squared with no remainder. And so, that's a little longer than I need, and so my solution to what looked like a complicated problem is just 2xy squared times the square root of 3. That's about it for now. Take care, and I'll see you next time.